Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Well, welcome to our home. This is a two-story home that we started building uh, one year ago. It hasn't been a full year in construction. Uh, we were on construction of it for about four months, stopped for about four months, and then we picked up for four months. So a total of eight months of construction on the house itself. So the two-story house is actually sitting on a 500 square meter lot. When we built this house, we kind of situated everything on one 250 square meter and then the driveway in the yard on the other 250 square meter uh, drive yard garden whatever it may end up becoming um, for whoever buys it so the house itself is 165 square meters of actual living space not including the actual front porches back porches and everywhere else outside and then we've got the 54 square meter pool house and a 24 square meter swimming pool that's in between the main house and the second house. Go ahead and join me inside. We're going to give you guys a rundown and this so I'll update you inside. Let's get out of the sun, but we'll go through a few things. So the house is actually built on a solid concrete reinforced foundation. Uh, what does that mean for the Philippines? Most of the Philippines construction, um, it's not really built the same way as we built this house. We made sure this house could withstand the strongest earthquake that was possibly thrown at it any condition that was possibly thrown at it. Uh, so it's, yeah, solid concrete footers, solid concrete stem walls, and then built up, and then AAC, Stark and AAC. If you don't know what an AAC is, it's auto aerated concrete. So none of these walls are hollow block. They're all AAC, which gives a great insulation value and soundproofing and fireproofing for this overall house. So. No cheap materials went into building this house. We wanted to make sure it was a solid, very sturdy structure. The outdoor tile that we went with is a non-slip tile. And you guys can see the quality of having a wet saw, having these nice clean 45s instead of having an ugly finish on the front. The tile work turned out absolutely beautiful for finishing. Now let's go ahead and go in and take a look at the main part of the house. Like I was saying a second ago, most of our crew and most of our guys were out for the last two weeks for Christmas and holiday vacation. Now they're coming back, now they're getting sick, so we're a little bit more delayed. But when my window guy gets back, or my, or my aluminum guy is what I call him, he's going, to be go ahead, he's going to go ahead and install and fabricate the pivot door. This isn't a hinge door, so it's not gonna be attached to the wall. It's going to be a pivot door. So there's a pivoting mechanism that gets installed into the floor and up high and this entire door is going to pivot outwards and or inwards, whatever direction you want to turn it. So that's the nice thing about that pivot door is it's going to be a very large centerpiece right when you walk out, walk in a very grand door. Right now we're on the finishing stages. Like I said, it's dirty. Um, we don't have a cleaning crew coming in next week. Yes, next Saturday is the very last day of the construction. I am pretty confident in what we have got left to do that we know that we will be wrapped up by next Saturday 100% complete and I've got a group of ladies that are coming in next Saturday, Sunday and Monday and they're going to start to clean this place, get all, rid of all the dust and make it spick and span over the three day period and get it ready for the final vlog which we will present to you guys the following week. So we're excited for the final home tour vlog. One of the first things that you'll notice is the actual concrete floor itself.
I just did a high speed polish and seal last week to prevent any dirt from entering into the concrete after we did get the final cleaning and polishing done. It'll get another layer of sealant and one more high speed polish, polish when it's all said and done to make it appear like it's a glass surface. And so the floor down here is solid concrete polished floors. We want the same theme and style with the concrete furniture because it's durable and it lasts. And you don't have to worry about pests, termites, or kids jumping on it and breaking the wood. And so we built in the actual concrete side tables, side table, side table. Each one of these side tables actually has electrical installed in it for charging phones. And then we'll have the lady make the cushions. And we've got the wall scones lights installed throughout the entire downstairs. So that in the evening, if you want some ambiance, you don't want the bright overhead recessed lights, you can turn on the, the scones, the wall lights on the side, which gives it a nice, nice feature and characteristic. Now, <clears throat> the thing about the windows that we installed in here, we didn't want one great big window because that's the west, the northern side, that's where we get all of our wind coming from. Most of the time throughout the year, um, if there is a typhoon or anything, all the wind comes from the north. So we wanted to install the smaller windows, but we wanted to install a lot of small windows to allow that airflow to come through. And I tell you what, when the wind is blowing, actually I'll open this one right now. There's a lot of air that comes through these windows when you do have them open. Yes. Thing is that we've already included the screens in with these. For the owner to, or the buyer to buy a huge flat screen TV to put it up on this wall. And then, after doing a lot of research, you'll notice that this is a little bit of a larger space for a sound bar. The newer sound bars now require a larger space because they have omnidirectional speakers. So I wanted to make sure that there was enough space on the top of that so the sound can come out from the sound bar. We also included the extra PVC inside the wall to run all the cables and cords inside the wall so you don't see any cables coming up behind the TV. It's a very clean, professional look. The other thing that I'm really tickled pink about was the fact that we were able to get ceiling fans in multiple locations throughout the entire house. So the downstairs area, these three ceiling fans are designed to really circulate the air into a Venturi effect. And so when all three of them are running, it really, really circulates the air from the outside to the inside. And that's why the location of the three ceiling fans. So if you have the ceiling fan on in the actual kitchen itself and you're doing some cooking, it's helping to draw the air in and push the air back outside, therefore eliminating a lot of the smoke. But to prevent the smoke buildup versus the first house, and a lot of the smoke buildup, we finally installed a range hood in the actual kitchen. Now this kitchen is technically our dream kitchen. This is the exact design that we've always wanted with the angle and then the stove separate from the actual oven itself. So we've got the stove sitting on top, which is just a three burner or two burner because we found out four burners was a waste of time. You clean too many burners. So we installed a two burner on top and then we've got the stove set in and built in on the bottom is granite countertops granite everything on this one we didn't want the tile on the actual kitchen surface and then everything was custom with the bull nose i had to carve it myself and then polish it so part of the process today is actually getting the granite repolished one more time and so i'll go through it and i'll start with about an 800 grit i'll go over all the granite surfaces and i work my way back up to a 5000 and then i give the granite a new polish and new shine to it then we've got a double basin stainless steel sink with a built-in soap dispenser and the actual single faucet. So this is a very, very sturdy, very good sink. And then I made sure that this sink was completely flat with the surface of the granite. Uh, it's a little bit dirty right now, but don't worry because this cleans out very beautiful. You guys will see it in the, von the final vlog on how beautiful it does look. The first house, we had a lot of regrets, but the construction the first build of the first house we didn't have much of a budget house it wasn't the quality that we wanted we were not left with much money to do for the kitchen cabinets 
Um, a lot of these subcontractors were not very good. And so we were not left with a product that we were really too, too proud of. It wasn't functional. What we did, we did with the money that we had. We were not happy with the way that the kitchen turned out. And that was, you guys have seen my vlogs in the past and you'll know, that was always my complaint, was the kitchen. That kitchen was a disaster. I hated it. I hated it from day one. And so that was one of the things is, there were so many things in that first house that I did not like. No, we could do better on our own. And sure enough, we have done better on our own because we pay attention to quality and we take pride in what we do. Uh, using the AAC and using the materials that we're using and being efficient, we barely spent more than what we actually spent on that house. So the kitchen was our chance to do everything all over again. Actual good quality kitchen cabinets, such as good sliders. Everything's nice and efficient in this kitchen and a ton of storage for once, a ton of storage. So for example, we thought about everything in advance. So you've got your silverware drawer right here. So if you're cooking or anything, you wanna be able to reach your utensils. If you're cooking right here at the stove, instead of running over here, running over there, trying to find something. So one of the features that we had installed was a built-in utensil section right here where you can literally pull out your utensil, put it in here, throw it in the sink, grab another one. So we've got these little cups that sit inside that can be easily cleaned and maintained while it's sitting inside of here. This kitchen, I wanted this to be a dream kitchen for the new buyers of the house, whoever you may be. So we'll get into that here in a sec second. So we've got the very nice pantry in here. Like I said, we, we spared no expense. We've got the onion drawer, and when I say it's an onion drawer or veggie drawer, because we've put holes in here so the veggies can breathe, and then you can put veggies down here. Then we've got one, two more, three more drawers, more opening, so you have plenty of storage and space up here. Obviously, since it's near a wet location, we've got the GFCIs, ground fault circuit interrupter, so if you're getting water or you're trying to plug something in over here, a blender, you're not going to be electrocuted. You guys will notice we've utilized every single little bit of space in here. The biggest mistake I made on the first house is I listened on how to build a kitchen here in the Philippines and that was my mistake. I was confused from day one. I'm like, why do I need to put hollow block here? Why do I need to put hollow block there? It made no sense to me. And so you guys have seen in our vlog, we just poured this entire concrete in here with the intention of putting the granite on but we got rid of the hollow block because you don't need the hollow block to hold this up. And so we have no hollow block in here. And yes, you guys, I know it's dirty. It's construction. So we were able to utilize, we got about an extra 40% more space in designing this kitchen. So everything, I mean, we've just got a ton of space in here now. Like I said, this is our redemption on this second house. We built it with pride, quality, and a lot of passion. We got to put the things into it that we wanted to put into it. The big windows, the opening windows, everything. So there was nothing being held back. The range hood. So we, we are tickle pink with the way that this house is going to look. So I've got a buffing to do on this, another coat of sealer and buffing, and this will be beautiful. And then you guys are going to see on the final tour, the actual pop-up outlet. We wanted to have electrical in here and so you hit a button the outlet comes up so you always have power right here and there's nothing on the wall itself this time so you don't have to go all the way over here if you're sitting at the table you can just put your phone straight on top of this it's going to charge for you because it's a wireless charging we didn't want to have the same mistakes again in this kitchen the same regrets so we made sure that we took our time and we designed it the right way with good material because we had more of a budget this time because we saved from the house construction from day one by utilizing better quality material, which saved us time and money. Therefore, we were able to put it back into the final completion of the actual house. So on the original design of the house, this side door was not in the original design. There was no exit out onto the side of the house. So we added the side door, which was, I'm so thankful that we did. So that was one of the big things. And then utilizing every square inch of this house, we had our aluminum guy install drawers underneath the stairs. 
And so there's one, two, three, four of these. And then we've got the actual area under the stairs that you can utilize for a ton of storage supplies. We've got the grounded breaker panel in here. So yes, this entire panel box is grounded. We've ran neutral, ground, and hot to everything. So on the other side of this is the actual bus bars for the neutral and the ground. So everything is 100% grounded with extra breakers in here for additional add-on features of the house. So we, we were able to afford a better smart home system versus the old LCD or the, the glass ones that we got before we bought those because we didn't have a whole lot of extra money. So we've got a better system. These are sewn off uh, smart switches. I'll include the link in the description. No, we don't get a commission or a kickback. I'm just really impressed with these switches. They are easy to connect and it's a button this time instead of a glass panel where you have to keep pressing. Very clean, very sleek, very, very good quality. So sewn off. S-O-N off smart home. So just check those out. You guys will be tickled pink with those. Utilizing every square inch of this house, we wanted to have a guest bathroom downstairs, but no need for the shower downstairs. If you have guests over, we wanted just a half bath. And so be underneath the stairs, we're gonna have a built-in cubby, which actually gets completed tomorrow. And then you'll be able to have a light that comes down into a little recessed area and put some plants up there. We, you see the actual uh, drain pipe coming out of the wall because this is a wall hung toilet system in this one to save space and to allow efficiency and something modern and different. We only did tile on the floor and up to one side of the wall just to make this room look a little bit bigger underneath the stairs. But as far as efficiency, when you're walking in here, you still got plenty of height above you to because the toilet's gonna come out to right, right here. So if you're a tall guy, you're not gonna have any issue coming in here and taking a whiz or taking a number two. And so we've got everything that's going to be installed, the pedestals, uh, the sink next week, and then the actual mirror here. And then we've got the frosted glass window on the outside for privacy. And so you still have light. That was the biggest thing. Before we go up the stairs, you guys will see it's completely tiled versus the last video is completely tiled. We brought the same tile from the outdoors indoors because it helped to match the overall flooring, everything else, so the, the color scheme. You got the salt and pepper granite over there. You've got the concrete floor, so we wanted to have the same tile on the stairs. I did that for two reasons, like I said, because it matches it's only two tile that we use throughout the house. That, and it's a safety issue. I didn't want a slick tile on the stairs. This is a anti-slip, anti-skid, even if it gets wet. As you're walking down the stairs, you're not going to fall. Believe it or not, throughout the course of construction, I, I have fallen down these stairs four or five times and it friggin' hurts. It hurts like a son of a gun. Actual stair lighting, it alternates one, two, three. So every other stair, it's gonna have directional lighting that comes across. So the first set of stairs all are lit up because there's plenty of lighting up there and a future chandelier right above the landing. You can turn the lights on from here and then when you get upstairs, there's another switch you can turn them off so you don't have to run downstairs, turn it off, run back upstairs, it defeats the purpose. We're going to do a short tutorial video before the final walk through the house. And on the tutorial, I told you guys I want to show you my rock mix that I use outside on actually having the waterproof seal and allow the water to penetrate. The other thing I want to show you guys is the epoxy that I'm going to use on the corner of the stair and how I clean that up and polish that off so you don't have a sharp edge and it keeps this corner tile from chipping. But you guys can see when they did this tile, what's the biggest thing you guys notice? Look how clean that cut is. Look how professional that looks. It's professional cut and all the way up. I didn't want to use a, a, a stair nose for the actual tile. I wanted to keep it clean, elegant, and simple going all the way up. The other thing, you'll see when it comes to finishing off the edge of stairs, it's very difficult. And if you were to scrape your finger on a lot of stairs on the edge, you're gonna see that the tile is just flat. They just cut the tile off on the edge. 
we didn't do this, uh, we didn't do that on here. What we did was we actually 45 the tile, so there's just a thin piece of tile here. We filled that in with a skim coat and then we painted that over. So you're never going to see the edge of a tile here. It's just finished and nice and even and flat. And then our railing will begin attached to the side of this right here. We installed some additional angle bar and additional supports so you can have a chandelier, a very heavy if you needed to, hanging down in the actual landing itself. Because this is such a large space, a chandelier would be seen from outside as well, so it would give it some really good grand elegance. And then we've got additional lighting right here on the edge of the wall, so that when you turn the lights on, you have lighting, lighting up this entire stair and landing area. Huge, huge window to let tons of light and air in. We didn't want to put the window on that side of the house because very difficult to clean. So we didn't put any windows on that far side or a huge window because I didn't want to try to clean it or leave it to someone else. This glass, very, very thick glass. I want to say this was um, 10 millimeter thick glass right here. So very thick glass on this window since it's a huge window, it's going to get more pressure from the outside and more wind and rain, never hail. You also see a window right here that's the actual CR for the master bathroom. Why did we put a window? Well, it's not opening. We wanted to allow the light from the outside to continue into that room. So that master CR has two windows, one to the outside and then one right here. It's just a little bit of more of a unique design that you'll, you normally won't see. So we have a window in the CR, a window to nowhere. As you come upstairs, you're going to also see that the actual stair tile is the same level as a floor tile in the hallway. I wanted to make sure all tile throughout the entire house was the same height. And then when we came in to do the bedrooms, I made sure they knew to make the tile cut right at the center where the door is going to close. So when the door is closed, you never see that cut tile. You'll notice that the tiles laid in one direction down the hall, but I wanted to make sure that in the bedrooms it was laid diagonally. And I did that because otherwise there would have been a sliver of tile on both sides no matter how this would have been laid out. And yes, each of these bedrooms also have a ceiling fan. This should be the hottest area in the house is upstairs, but believe it or not, it's actually very cool up here because we did use AAC on everything. Interior walls get four inch AAC, exterior walls get six inch AAC. Uh, actual bedrooms. And then we utilized this space out front, which was a very important space for an office or a guest bedroom for someone. So you could put a sleeper sofa in here, but this was generally made as an office area. So you can put your desk right here and you have beautiful views of the Sierra Madre Mountains out to the east and they are absolutely gorgeous views. And every window up here also has screens on them as well. And yes, they are magnetic so when you close them, they stay shut. So when I say the house is 165 square meters of living space, the downstairs is 82 and a half square meters and upstairs is 82 and a half square meters. All the bedrooms and the two full bathrooms are kept upstairs. So there's four, bath four bedrooms, two baths upstairs. So let's go back to the other two bedrooms and take a look at those. So we've got the guest bathroom for the other three bedrooms or the two bedrooms, one office up here. The first thing you'll notice versus typical bathrooms here, see ours, there is no drop down, there is no ledge. I wanted to make sure I trained my crew on how to properly slope a bathroom into the drain so if there's any water, you shouldn't have to have a step down if you do it correctly. And so I've trained them on how to use pitch sticks, and especially in the shower. And so if any water does hit the floor, it's going to go back in towards that shower drain. Now this week we're going to be getting our glass partition installed right here, right at the seam of this. And so we will have this completed. Now, we got these showers at the Builders Outlet over in uh, Mexico, Pampanga area. And I absolutely love this actual shower itself. You can actually see water and it's got the clicking on it, which I, I really want to try this out. The hot and cold. Every single 
bathroom will have hot and cold water, but we're not installing it in a shower. We've actually have a location underneath the sink itself where the hot water heater will be installed. So you don't see this ugly hot water heater installed above your shower. And it's also a safety issue to have in a wet location. So we have it connected to a GFCI underneath the sink. So if anything happens, you're not going to be electrocuted. So once the vanity is installed, we're gonna have a lighted mirror on the back and then we've also got another GFCI right next to the sink. And so this is a double light feature so you can turn on either the shower light or you can turn on just the overhead light. And the lighted mirror itself will have it on its own power supply and on off on the mirror itself. So you see this, this actual CR turned out absolutely amazing. Amazing tile work on the corners. And these are gonna get epoxy as well. So there's a lot of epoxy to put on all these corners, but in the end, it gives it a very professional, clean look. They did an amazing job on the actual tile in this CR. Now, when we go into the master bedroom, this is one of the last areas to be completed for the aluminum work. That means the doors, the sliding door. So the bed we originally had planned for this wall right here. And so that's why you have an outlet there and an outlet there and then a small window right above the bed. And once again, because we didn't wanna have any regrets, we knew how to design a house efficiently without spending a lot of extra money. We put a ceiling fan in here. Yes, you can add an air, con air con, but I'm telling you guys, you don't need air conditioning in this house. That's one of the benefits of having this house. No air con will be needed. It is very cool upstairs, but we didn't still install and a socket for aircon. This is meant to be the TV wall. That is why the outlet is so high. So if you guys are asking why is the outlet so high, this is where the TV sits. But you'll notice there's outlets everywhere else. One, two, three in this room. Four. <laughs> Always forget that we've got that outlet right there. And then we've got the switch for the actual outdoor lighting. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the back porch of the house. So like I said, we have the same tile continued on the outside of the house, so it's that non-slip. And then I did a, a sealing of grout, so all the grout on the outside of the house is sealed everywhere, so it doesn't turn colors, it doesn't turn brown and green, and that's why I still got that beautiful gray color to it, because it's already been sealed, even though it's been wet, sunny, it's all been sealed, so you never have any issues with it. This, the railing, once my welder is not, or once my welder is healthy again, he'll be back to get the railing put on. And so, yeah, we've got a lot of things to do, but next Saturday, I'm 100% confident we should be wrapped up. Please, please, I'm hoping. Above us, we wanted to continue with that same wood theme with the aluminum soffit that's above. We wanted to use a PVC paneling above us for the outdoor area. So we've got PVC paneling here, and then we've got the PVC paneling side continue with the theme of the wood on the soffit. Uh, we made sure that there were plenty of outdoor receptacle, recept we made sure there was plenty of outdoor outlets there, that's easier to say. And these are also GFCI, GFCI protected with on and off switches on here. And when you close this, you can have a cord in here and it waterproofs it. So if you've got a cord, you don't have to worry about water getting in here. It automatically seals it up and we set these inside the wall to give it a nice clean look and not just a flimsy little plastic cover. Um, on the first house, it was just a cheap, cheap outlet put in. The other thing that I didn't appreciate or one of the things that I don't like is when the outdoor outlets are done with the indoor outlets. These should always be kept on a se separate circuit and then you're indoor. So all the outdoor outlets are on our separate circuit now versus on the same one as the actual indoor. Even though they're back to back, there's different wire pulled. The master bedroom itself does have a master bathroom. So the master bathroom is a very large walk-through shower. It's very well professionally done on the corners as well. So this one, we did the tile on the sides because if you've got the toilet right there, you want to be able to easily clean it. The back of the house features a very large outdoor living area, not only for the back of the house, but also the side of the house. The design of the first house, I wanted a room to be built for the water filtration system, um, for the pressure tank, PVC pipe. We made sure that a room was built with a door that can be closed. So yes, we actually put tile inside. 
Yes, it's dirty from construction, but there's actually tile inside, so you're not slipping around. And there's not moss and mold building up on the actual ground. There's an outdoor laundry area, outdoor wash station for pets and animals or anything else. And so having control to build the house ourselves, we were able to get the quality that we wanted. So with the actual construction of the, this house, we've got six inch AAC block for the exterior walls. That does multiple things. It helps to soundproof, it helps to earthquake resistant, and they actually Starkin just did an earthquake test. This house, I'm very confident. I'm gonna just gonna stay sleeping because I know I'm gonna be safe in this house with the way that it was built. The outdoor living space, uh, we wanted to make sure that we included a plenty, plenty of area to actually live in this house instead of having to maintain. And so one of the things I'm really proud of right now is my tile guy and the way that he did this dirty kitchen. We've got an actual nice looking dirty kitchen instead of just one that's just thrown in. And so you can see once again, nice clean corner cuts, very professionally done. We've got the actual outdoor, outdoor bar here. We'll have the sink, the outdoor bar, and we did tile wraparound on this entire thing, and it turned out absolutely beautiful. One of the last things we've got to do next week is put the rock in here. Like I said, I'm, I'm really, really hoping that all my crew is back and they're not sick, and we have a full four or five people. Once we have those full four or five people, stuff gets done very quickly. I mentioned to you guys one of the last things to be tiled is our actual waterfall features. So he's completing that right now and he should be wrapped up with that tomorrow. And he should be able to start putting the rock in here since he knows how to do the rock, he can start putting that in here tomorrow. No, we haven't cleaned the pool. Construction's not done yet. I won't start cleaning the pool to get it to turn beautiful until 100% of the construction's complete. So the tile work's almost done on the pool and so we'll show you guys that on the final house tour video. We'll have everything running, everything beautiful, and everything cleaned up. Because yes, we do clean everything before we turn stuff over. We don't let it sit for three months without caretakers. If you guys know, you know. The other thing was we knew how to design an outdoor space. We weren't stifled and told this is all you can have, this is all you can afford. And so one of the things we really wanted, we wanted a different design on the outdoor space. So once this is all cleaned up and power wash, you'll see that I'm gonna take a short video and I'm gonna show you guys how easy this rock is to clean once you actually put a hose to it. And what, you can just put a garden hose and this rock cleans so, so easily. And so we were able to design our own outdoor living space. We only did the railing on this section in front of the house and we had a full solid wall built on the other section. This is a very large grand area, grand house with a pool and then the guest house extra bathroom, the full setup. And I'm really proud of the way that everything turned out. It turned out way better than I had ever imagined. On this house, I absolutely have no regrets now. It's 100% how we wanted it to turn out. It's actually better than what we wanted to turn out because we have good quality material, great crew. We have all the tools that are required to do the job the right way, considering the material that went into it, the quality that's gone into this house and what you get for the price. Now I've seen some of these houses in Manila go for 50 million, but we're not in Manila. So I have to price it per location and this location, I mean, it's still pretty darn cheap for this house. If I could, I would actually sell it for 14 or 15 million. I do feel this is worth 14 or 15 million pesos. I wanna thank you guys once again for joining us, supporting us through this build vlog. Like I said, there's only two videos left in this series before we move on to the next build and the Phoenix series. Until we see you guys next time, I wanna thank you guys so very much.